dinner tonight, get some ice cream and some radicals. Yeah. So in this example, the main important thing that I want to remind you with this one is that B stinks. And we need to remember how B stinks. Now, you guys should know what the radical function looks like. So the radical function looks something like that. And if I want to evaluate it too, I can just find the point applying direct substitution. And guess what? Even when I plug in 2, when I plug in 2, I get 0, right? So it looks like you know, either I have transformations here. So it looks like the answer is 0 pretty quickly, right? But you got to be careful. Let's look at, because we did look at, oh, we didn't actually look at, but we did look at another way that a discontinuity can be defined. Well, let me look at this paragraph again. There is one value where this function does not have a limit that's defined, and that's at the end point, correct? The square root is a continuous function, so we don't need to worry about the discontinuities. But we do know if I find the limit at that end point, the limit does not exist. So I want to make sure 2 is not the end point there. And I'm looking at this expression, and I'm seeing a 2 in there. I'm like, uh-oh, that could be a transformation of 2. That could be danger, right? So let's go ahead and identify what these transformations are. Now remember, I could rewrite this as negative x plus 2. Is everybody OK with me rewrite switching the x's and the y's? And then, no, you're not OK with me doing that? <laughs> then I could factor out a negative. So therefore, I know I have a negative b, which is reflecting about my y-axis. And I'm shifting the graph two units to the right. So what's really happening here is my original parent graph that looked once like that is now being shifted, is now being reflected about the y-axis, and shifted two units to the right. So that is what k of x looks like. That is the parent graph. Right? That's why b stinks. b has messed everything up. It's not, it's not being shifted two units to the left, because b is in there. b reflected it. Right? So you got to like factor out the b to see what's going on. Or you could just set this equal to 0 and solve. And then you guys will see x equals 2. But you wouldn't see the reflection there. So now we want to evaluate 2. Well, if we're evaluating 2, guess what? That is the endpoint, right? So therefore, this does not exist. Um, but what if I did the limit of 1? Could we find the limit at 1? Is there any problem with the limit at 1? Right, that's fine. It's only that endpoint that we've got to be careful of. OK? So again, I mean, you guys can use your graphing calculator, but that is something you would.